The world's largest armies as of the last 20 years. Let's see if we can explain some things here. This video is by Gazda. Go check them out. So there's a lot of information that's kind of thrown at us here, but there's also a lot of things that are going on underneath the surface. So we're starting off in 1820. This is after the fall of Napoleonic France. This is five years after Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo. Napoleon during his time kind of threw the European continent into some chaos. Now let's see what the militaries are looking like. So starting this video off, we obviously have the Russian Empire at the top here. And to be honest, the Russian Empire is going to stay at the top for a while. Probably throughout this entire video, in fact. Russia is just a very massive place with a lot of people in it. Remember that Russia also gave Napoleon a pretty big L when he tried to invade. So seeing that their army size is way larger than everyone else really shouldn't be a surprise. France dropping down to third, though, is pretty interesting by 1820. Remember that Napoleon commanded a peak of one million men at the start of the Russian campaign in 1812. We also have the Ottomans, which still exist and won't be eliminated for another hundred years. Uh, Spain, who's kind of had the collapse, they're going to have all their colonies go away. UK, who's never had a large army, they're more of a naval power, that's what keeps them safe. And then also look at the USA ticking down there. Wow, they actually dropped out. <laughs> they dropped out of the top 15, 1822. Remember, this is 10 years after the War of 1812 when they fought the British again. Obviously, the United States had a lot of growing to do at this time, but they're definitely going to be someone that continues to pop up in this video towards the end. Interesting to see some Italian powers here. Meanwhile, there is an Italy. Italy's about to unite, though. So the UK should continue to get stronger. That Prussia right here is going to turn into a Germany soon. Well, actually, they've got like 50 years. So watch as all the European powers begin to catch Russia. I mean, Russia, first of all, is going down. It's not so much that the other European powers are growing. Okay, now Russia's coming back up. Russia was actually dealing with several conflicts during the 1820s. That's probably why we saw their bar kind of drop down there a little bit, but it seems like it's starting to grow back in the 1830s. So Russia is going to get very close to a million here soon enough. France is back in second place. Oh, wait, Austria passed them back up by 18 35. Wait, there's a little bit of a race back and forth. And actually, the Russians, they were at a million, then they dropped down again. Look at all these victories for Russia that they're going to get in the 19th century. I mean, it's just literally a massive green box. Here's one defeat that they took in the Crimean War. That's going to be a big one coming up in 1853. Also, keep in mind Japan, because Japan's going to be popping up here pretty soon as well. Wow, look at how far. So this is, two things are happening. Russia's dropping down again, but Austria and France are beginning to catch up. Again, surprisingly, the British, the British who rules the waves, they were kind of low. I mean, they were in that fifth place spot. They're now just starting to build up their army size. And this doesn't mean that they weren't powerful. They were still really powerful at this time. Look at Belgium, who has more than the Netherlands at this point. Again, Bavaria and Prussia are two different places. Uh, not till 1871, they're going to come together to form Germany. And that's going to be a whole nother monster that's going to form up. Bam, here goes Napoleon, or the, not, uh, wait, not Napoleonic France, or probably not the Napoleon that you were thinking of. We have Napoleon the third here now leading. Again, it's about to be the 1850s. The U.S. is still not here. Also, that U.S. Civil War is coming up in the 1860s. Bam. Again, the race for uh, second place between France and Austria continues to go back and forth. Again, there's going to be kind of a big rivalry here until World War II when Austria gets completely divided up. It's funny how big of a drop-off after Spain. Also, we still don't have a United Italy just yet. Two Sicilies is going to merge into Italy. Sweden is still doing pretty good, even though this is far along after their Great Northern War and the Great, like, Swedish Empire. Okay, here goes Russia once again. Back up to a million men. It's just like a constant back and forth of like what amount of troops Russia has. Russia likes to employ a strategy of just like meat shields, basically. Uh, speaking of that, China should be popping up here soon. Ah, uh, here we go. I love that it's labeled the Crimean War 1853. So this is a big L that Russia is going to take. Wow, Russia is getting a huge military now, though. 1.6 million men. We also have Brazil finally popping up on the list. Again, no USA, though. Okay, so here, whoa, 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 what is this? Who is this? Okay, that's right. There's the Russian Empire, the Empire of Russia. There's Russian Empire and now the Empire of Russia. We just have a cool flag change. That was freaking me out there for a second. Okay, finally the U.S. is there. Now watch them drop back down, or maybe they'll come back up during the Civil War. How, how are they going to count the troops? Oh, okay, so I think they're counting both the South and the North's troops combined. I guess that makes sense. We also have the Kingdom of Italy, so the Italian Peninsula is unified. Also, the Qing Dynasty is now uh, on the list. Look how chaos, this is so much chaos. All right, so everything has changed in the last like 10 years, if you couldn't tell already. We now have the US as number one. This is during the height. Okay, now the Civil War is just ending. They had a million troops, now it's over. They're kind of dropping back down in terms of size. They don't need to have like a large standing army. Okay, the Qing Dynasty was really high up. The Qing Dynasty, or 
where China is dealing with like their century of humiliation right now. Look at Italy go. Wow, Italy's really rising up. They were pretty high up there for a second there. The Austrians have merged with Austria-Hungary. We're also going to see the unification of Germany here. It's 1871. There we go. So the Franco-Prussian War. Obviously, when these countries are in a war, their, their militaries go up. They have more and more people, units in their army. So there is the new Imperial Germany that's popped up. Both France and Germany had, you know, large armies at this time because they were fighting each other. So we're now starting to see nations uh, wield like more than a million men in their army. Uh, I mean, Russia just doesn't even need to be in battle to be able to do that. They're just doing that. They're also probably just like fighting a lot more in general. Here comes Japan in 1874. Japan and Russia are also going to get into it in the early 1900s. Netherlands still kind of staying and so is Sweden. They're kind of just staying. Spain is, uh, Spain, it's, there's not a whole lot that's going to be happening for Spain. I mean, there's going to be a Spanish Civil War. Uh, Spain's going to get into a war with the U.S., but they're they're kind of just kind of stuck in the middle for this whole video more than likely. The Russo-Ottoman War happening here, 1877 to 1878. So Russia's going to pop back up, maxing 1.2 million men. France, again, staying in that second place spot. It really shows just how strong France still was. France technically has a bigger army than Germany at this time. They're going to be pretty big rivals coming into the 20th century because of the world wars that are about to take place. In the UK, wow, the UK kind of disappeared for a second there. Again, the UK, their focus is not really to have a huge army. It's all about, about the Navy for them. So the US was, did have a very large army for a minute there. Okay, now we have uh, the Russian Empire changing uh, their kind of vibes again, so that's why they're back on top. They they were still before as well. The U.S. is going to get into a war with Spain, like I said, pretty soon here. The Ottomans, who are called the Dying Man of Europe, still having a pretty big army. Here goes Germany. So this is what's going to tempt Germany a lot as we head into the 1900s. Look at this army size. Also, they're going to begin to pass up France. Also, look at the Empire of Japan. The Empire of Japan is beginning to eat up a lot of things back in Asia. Mexico doing pretty well for themselves as well. There's going to be the America, the Mexican Revolution soon. Oh, the Mexican Revolution was like their independence. No, that's a different thing that's going on. All right, so here we are in the 1900s. The U.S. is really building up. Uh, we're leading into WW1, and there's going to be absolute chaos in this video once 1914 rolls around. Again, Russia has been hovering around a million men for this entire video, funny enough. Empire of Germany is looking real powerful, but France is kind of like an arms race in a way. I'm sure they both felt very threatened of each other, and they're continuing to just increase that army size. Russia is now up to 1.7 million men. Here's finally the Russo-Japanese War. This is going to be a big big L that Russia is going to take. This is also going to cement Japan as a very uh, formidable threat in Asia. So Russia is going to lose a lot of men. They're going to drop back down. Empire of Japan is now in like a strong, what is this? Eighth place. Wow. Look at Ethiopia. Look, wow. What's going on with Ethiopia? I mean, Ethiopia was pushing out the Italian. There's going to be a couple of wars that happened. The first Italian Ethiopian war took place in 1896, ensured Ethiopia's independence. And then of course, Mussolini was going to get his revenge during WW2. Damn, man, look at this. In the first war, the Italians only sent like 20 20,000 men versus almost 200,000 Ethiopians. All right, here we go. Finally heading into WW1. This is where the first chaos of the video. I'm actually a little bit afraid. So we have China Republic coming in. No no more Qing Dynasty. We have Bulgaria. Oh, that's right. We have to talk about like the Balkan. The, there's like Balkan wars that are happening that are like it's a prelude to WW1. Second Balkan war, Balkan war. Okay, here's WW1. All right, I don't even know what to even think because everyone's going to be building up their army sizes, obviously. We have Russia at 7 million men. That is crazy. Meanwhile, uh, Russia and Germany, the British, the Italians haven't entered, I think, just yet. They're probably going to enter very soon. Uh, Russia is dealing with their own civil war. They're going to turn into the Soviet Union right now, so they probably got kicked out of WW1 by now. And there goes uh, the Germans, because they're about to lose WW1. So they just dropped off the face of the earth, basically. 1918, and France is the most powerful. Russia's already building back up. Now, they should have a flag change right here. Or maybe. Soviet Union? Soviet Union? Hello? There it is. Okay. Bam. All right. So the Soviet Union is now leading. China is... I don't know how they're going to do this in the video because China deals with a civil war here. I guess they're going to maybe just keep them all the same. Yeah. China Republic. Soviet Union loses a war against Poland. That's why Poland's troops are pretty high. Poland remains independent. Empire of Japan continuing to build up. Ethiopia is still very high. Look at the Czech Republic. Also the Weimar Republic. Look at how low Germany is in 1926. All the way down here at the very bottom and then watch what happens in the 30s. Bam. Okay. So there's the Republic of China. Soviet Union is still uh, kind of licking their wounds from their civil war. Uh, France is still doing good, coming off their big dub in WW1. Romania is pretty high up there on the list as well. Oh yeah, okay, so here comes the Spanish Civil War, and there goes No-No Germany. It's 1933, and we're going to very quickly... Wow, look at the Italians, too. The second Italian-Ethiopian War, and that's when they get their revenge, so... 
They already won that. They're kind of going to drop back down. We have the Soviet Union finally passing up China. So they are going to keep China together because China's in chaos in this moment. And that's going to benefit the Empire of Japan. They're actually probably already fighting over there. Okay, so World War II has broken out. 1939, France is building up their troop level. I can't even keep up with all this. Look at the, the British who are at a million men. Oh, I can't even, what even is this? All right, uh, the, <laughs> France is already gone. They've already surrendered to the no-no Germans. We now have, uh, Vic, Vichy France. And, well, they're, they're already gone as well. At least they're dropping out of the video. The U.S. is really going to start to build up because, remember, they didn't enter until 1941, Pearl Harbor. So now the U.S. is at the height. They're at their height. Oh, well, that's right, because the Soviets were fighting the no-no Germans, and they're just, like, meat grinding each other down. We're also fighting the, the, the Japanese. Turkey is no longer the Ottomans. Look at this huge drop-off. I mean, it really just shows, like, the amount of powers that were left in 1945. Obviously, by 1946, uh, Germany's out. They're gone. Is it going to be West Germany and East Germany now for the video? Uh, now now the Chinese are going to continue their civil war that they had before. The communists are going to win. Here's the beginning of the Cold War. The Soviets also have to rebuild way back up. Here goes uh, the PRC China, the communist communist China. Taiwan, unfortunately, is going to be dropping out as well because they're just kind of banished to their little island. And the Brits and the French are going to lose a lot of power here. They're starting to decolonize, lose their colonies all around the world. South Korea is building up because they're no longer under Japan. Japan's no longer to be found around here anymore. It's 1955. That Soviet army is really starting to recover now, especially by the 60s. Oh, we should see Vietnam pop up here soon enough. India's just got their independence. Pakistan will probably also appear here. We have a regular modern day Italy, no longer controlled by Mussolini. Oh, North Korea as well. That's right. North Korea is going to, they're going to be kind of burned into the video from now on, I think. Indonesia popping up as they've gotten their independence from the Netherlands. Here's West Germany. Maybe we won't see East Germany. Watch as India climbs. India's going to really climb. Oh, here goes South Vietnam. Where's North Vietnam? It's the 60s. We're now peaking during the Vietnam War. Soviets are going to be dealing with their own chaos as well. Taiwan troop count still remains pretty high. There goes Pakistan. Spain's going to drop out. Brazil is back up in the list as well. Here we are in the 70s. And North Vietnam. So North Viet the North Vietnamese are going to win. In 1975, China is going to, uh, this is so scary, because you have China and the Soviet Union who were best buds. Look at this army force that they both had. Eight million men. There was going to be a Soviet Sino split. The teams was going to be divided. So there goes a united Vietnam. They were still going to fight Cambodia and things like that. But the Americans are out of Vietnam by now. Here goes North Korea continuing to climb because there's like essentially a Cold War. I mean, they never really ended the war, the Korean War. Iran is high up. It's now the 80s. It's going to be very interesting to see the collapse of the Soviet Union in 10 years because there's going to be all these new powers, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Belarus, uh, Iraq is popping back up. They're going to fight, yep, Iran, there it is. Yeah, these two, I mean, China and the Soviets, they just, they can wield so many men if they really want to. Iran is popping way up back in 1988. We also have Egypt as well. China once again takes a hold of the Soviet Union. China's going to stay at that number one spot for the rest of this video. I'm pretty sure for the rest of the video. End of the Cold War. So now we have Russia. They're no longer the Soviets. There's Ukraine. I don't know if we're going to see any other satellite powers as well. Oh, we also have a united Germany. There's no longer an east and west Germany. So Germany should be continuing to rise up in the 90s. Uh, we have 2001 and all the chaos that happened there. Russia's actually just dropping, dropping. Look at North Korea, the, the little nation of North Korea. Just putting all of their men into that army, just in case. Myanmar, pretty high up as well. There goes Ethiopia again. Look at Ethiopia go. Okay, so 2001 happens. Uh, the U.S. is continuing to raise up their troop levels, though. Crazy when, like, all the chaos, when the World Wars happen, there's just, like, you can't, you don't even know what's going on. Finally, France starting to finally come back here. It's 2008. The financial crisis, I don't know if that's going to mess at all with troop levels or army sizes. Uh, the U.S. is still about a million men behind China, but that's, that's just what's going to happen. They got over a billion people, I think, by now in 2011. Indonesia is in that top 15 now. Again, North Korea, the tiny country of North Korea, they, I mean, that's what they have to do. They, the Hermit Kingdom has to have a very large army just to detour anyone from doing anything too crazy. Look at the troop levels actually going down for the U.S., not because there's specifically a war, I'm guessing. Less people just uh, enlisting, possibly. Thailand's still pretty high up. Here it is in 2020, and India's continuing to rise. These are the big powers. Oh, is there going to be a significant change there? Russia, Ukraine? No. So Pakistan, obviously, threatened by India, so they're also going to have a very large army. Iran feels threatened. They have to have a large army as well. Very fun video. 
Like I said, a lot of things going on to the surface. Hopefully, I was able to explain some of those numbers a bit better. And like I said, please go subscribe if you aren't already. And big thanks to the patrons. I am the kidnapper. I oofed Drew since no one paid his ransom. This channel is now run by AI. AI. Australia is Zane real. Drew's I'm not Argentina. a Twenty dollars is a lot. Asher, two hundred. Norwood, Chester, Kiori, Tiny, Garland, Zanardi, Quizzer, Trader, Isaiah, John, Denver, Five Six Nine, The Poor, The Wayne, Comedy, The Wayne, Next Ten, Why Am I Doing This?